right, I'm here on the Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington. We have just completed the hour-long presentation from Microsoft and the reveal of the Xbox One. Uh, a lot of stuff was talked about, very little with any true substance, but there are some fascinating points that they have presented. Uh, let's just start with the first one, the name. It's Xbox One. I know some people can't figure out what that means. It did sometimes sound like they were using shorthand to refer to the original Xbox released in 2001, but it does make sense if you think about it. It is a reboot of the system. It's sort of a reevaluation of what it is supposed to be. It gives the sense of beginning. I do wonder why they didn't go the route of Apple and just name the thing Xbox. Give the sense that there will not be a 720 or an Xbox 2 anywhere down the line and that it will be something that exists and persistently it will just be upgraded with software and firmware over time. More importantly, the thing they began with, with the television, with the easy way to move between TV, between games, between your music, that seems to be the strongest and the most exciting aspect of what they presented today and clearly has been the focus of their intention since they started development on the system. Go to music. If this works, this could be that signature living room hub. The ease of moving between various types of media. The first thing I thought of is how many games I tend to be reviewing during March Madness and how much I would just like to pop out and check the scores and get back into what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, there seems to be a lot of fun, convenient application coming out of that and a lot of room to grow into something that could be very dynamic and really could turn the television into that centerpiece and really take it away from what the PC has been. Now, following that point, I must say, Microsoft seemed to be making exciting statements that didn't seem to really muster up. In particular, in their talks with EA and the sense of partnership, there was no sense of what that partnership was going to be. Uh, there have been a lot of rumors they might become the exclusive console for the FIFA franchise, which would give them dominance in Europe, and instead it seems to be more that there will be exclusive content that will only be available for FIFA on the Xbox 360. Uh, given the fact that FIFA is such a worldwide phenomenon and has been responsible for Sony's performance inside of Europe, I cannot tell if an exclusive content is really going to offer that kind of sea change in terms of the dynamics and the market share that we see on the European and continent and, of course, in the UK. Now, the games themselves, I did not expect to see many games. I uh, do know they are going to be showing more at E3. They have identified 15 exclusive titles for the Xbox One, and eight of them are new IPs. That is very reassuring. I have no reason to think that that is a falsehood. Uh, we do need to see more of it in the future. One of the things that I would like to stop seeing at these presentations is showing trailers and saying that this is a look at a game. Uh, Forza will always look good, but that was a trailer, and to just see something that was more demonstrative, because racing games are such a good way to see what the power of a system is. It really was a disappointment that they didn't take advantage of that one moment to get a sense of what the leap in visual fidelity will be from the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One. The other game we saw was Quantum Break. Uh, Guys, we have to come up with new words, because I was thinking about Quantum Dream and Quantum Leap. Uh, we, we have to name our game something else because it gets so confusing. Uh, once again, no idea where that's going to go, but at least it did confirm that they are looking and investing in new IPs that don't seem to be the safe type of game that Gears of War and Halo definitely are. The idea that Xbox will also now be doing their own independent television productions, highlighted, of course, by Halo, with the participation of Steven Spielberg, that is very, very appealing. How big this is going to be, how this is going to work in the long term with a level of investment is yet to be seen, but the fact that they did bring in a former executive from CBS to oversee this, this does seem to be a very major pillar of what Microsoft is doing. But without talking about what more of the products are going to be in the future, it's hard to tell if this is going to last far into the lifetime of the Xbox One. When it comes to the hardware itself, they did give us specifics that don't exactly tell us much. Uh, the RAM, it's eight gigs. We don't know if it's DDR3 or DDR5. They didn't say if it's an x86 architecture, although I do believe it probably is. I have every confidence this is a powerful system that will make games look very good, but they really do seem to be downplaying what's under the hood, whereas Sony, in contrast, back in February, seemed to really position that as a strong positive for the system. Also, they mentioned Overall. cloud computing, and it can exist in the cloud, and never really got into too much detail as to how that's going to affect gameplay, how that's going to affect our media storage, and what that means in the long run. Like I said before, there seem to be the parts of some very good ideas. It's unclear if Microsoft, the 
themselves have fully formulated what their strategies and intentions are. They just want to make sure that they have these elements connected to the Xbox One to take advantage of them somewhere down the line. Now, the final thing they showed which was no surprise, was Call of Duty. This has always been a signature franchise not owned by Microsoft, which is heavily identified with Microsoft's gaming consoles. Uh, it was a nice trailer, it looks good, but I think it does indicate one of the problems that really permeated this entire presentation, which was, who are they talking to? Is it just to an American audience? Is it to the core gamers who seem to be increasingly turned off by military shooters like Call of Duty? Or is this to a very broad, general population that may not be tuning in at 10 o'clock in the morning out here on the West Coast? It really doesn't show what their strategy is going to be and who is going to be the early adopter of this system. I can sense a lot of alienation from my Twitter feed of the core gamers. And of course, I haven't heard anything from everybody else. So we just got out of the presentation. These are my thoughts right now. We are, are gonna get some time to go hands-on with something, most likely the user interface of the uh, Xbox One. We're gonna get some interviews, so we're gonna keep on giving you some content so we can further understand the significance of what was announced today.